Hi, I'm Emily Taylor with Collage Quilter. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about fabric organization and selecting fabric for a project. And to demonstrate, I'm going to refer to this uh, project that's in progress. So you can see I've got my gray tone value, I've traced it onto my parchment paper, and I've started applying the fabric. But if I were starting out, oh, and by the way, this project is in my Take Flight book that's available at collagequilter.com. So if I were to look at this from the beginning, um, I can see that there are four different shades of gray and that runs the spectrum from the really dark that you see down here up to the light. Now, really you only need three values. You need to express three values to make something look very realistic. So if four is too hard for you, you can just combine a couple of them, but um, three or four values is what I'm kind of looking at here. But I, want to I wanted to get a little bit of it done so that I can show you something really interesting and important. So we see this dark, dark area of the bird right down here, is right here. Um, there is not a single piece that's a solid black. In fact, we've got a lot of brown, or excuse me, not brown, blue, dark purple, dark green, uh, there is a little bit of black, but it has a lot of pattern on it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, that don't feel like you need to only select black fabric if you're going to be making a raven. Uh, the more important thing is to collect fabric that's really, really dark. Now the other thing is I've selected a wide variety, so the more fabric that you can include in that value section, the more interesting your collage is going to be. In fact, I think that's kind of the key for making a really interesting collage is in one section that's the same value, just pull in as much fabric as possible. So the way I would approach this is say, okay, I'm going to be making a raven. That's generally black fabric, but I know I'm gonna pull in some other colors. So I will, this is how I have my fabric organized. I've got my anything that's about a quarter yard cut up to a half a yard cut is in these white bins. And so I'll start out by pulling out my gray and black fabric. And I just want to show you how I have it organized. So I've got the majority of this is just the lighter gray and then my darker, um, my darker black and dark gray is in this bundle or in this uh, bin. So I got these bins at Ikea. They are stiff, heavy plastic um, with a nice lid that enables me to stack on top of them. Um, so, I, so I keep my fabric in these, but before I go to my larger pieces of fabric, I'm always gonna go, I'm gonna start with my scraps. Let me say one more thing before I dig in too much with this. Um, you do not need a large quantity of fabric when you're making a collage quilt, but as I said, what you need is a large variety. So when I'm shopping for fabric, or I always recommend that people try and find a fabric shop that will sell eighth of a yard cuts. And that was hard to find for a lot of my customers, so we started collecting fabric and curating these fabric bundles. So on collagequilter.com, you can find curated fabric bundles that have 18 pieces of fabric, so this is blue, 18 pieces of fabric from dark, really dark, to very, very light, and they're only eighth of a yard strips, which is four and a half inches by the width of fabric. And the reason that I like this is because I can pull a piece out that I need and chop off just a six inch six inch six inches from that strip and then prepare it with my steam seam so these fabric bundles are again available at collagequilter.com I curate all of them in fact that they this fabric is what I'm using in all of my collages so it's a good assortment of um, prints that I find to be very helpful and useful in 
uh, making a collage quilt. Now there's another video that you can find on my Teachable platform that talks about selecting fabric. So if you're gonna be shopping for fabric yourself, go check out that free video um, and it, or read in my books about what I look for when I'm um, shopping for fabric. So anyway, oh, that's, that's the fabric. So the other way, so these are my larger pieces of fabric. Um, and then these are, I have multiple gray bins for every color that contain all of my scraps. And I like to start here first, but if I don't find what I need here, then I'll go to my larger bins and I'll cut small pieces. So the way I approach this, and the other, a couple of bins that I would grab are my blue and my purple, because those are dark and cool. So here's my, here's my blue bin, and let me grab my purple bin as well. So now I've got all these bins of fabric, and as I said, I've got four values here. So I'm just going to be focusing on creating four sets of fabric, okay? So I'd start by just pulling out pieces of fabric that I think I might use. In fact, I think I've used most of these in the collage already. So I'm gonna pull them out. These are in the blue, and you can see right out of the chute, this one's darker. These are probably in the lighter value range. And then this one might be in between. So that's how I'm going to start. I'm just going to start pulling out fabric from the blue and the gray and black pieces. Now some of them haven't been prepared with steam -a seam That's what I call virgin fabric. And many of these scraps have been prepared with steam -a seam You can see I've already been using them in another project. In fact, I think this one was already used in this you can see it right there that's the exact cut right there <laughs> so i'm going to pull that out and continue to use that so what i will do is just pull these pieces out and then i'll try and sort them according to which uh, value they fall into which value set if it's really really light or if it's really really dark now the other thing is i'm not going to worry so much about um, matching this value precisely it's just relative value okay so I can see that there's a relative value change this area is going to be a little bit lighter than this area and I only care about a distinction I don't care if it's an absolute I don't care if my fabric matches the values on that absolutely so I'm gonna just keep going here and I'll pull some purples in dark purples and I probably have some really fun um, some other fun purple colors in here so you can see this is this is where it gets fun I just will bring in as much fabric as possible I always want to err on the side of having more fabric than I need instead of not enough because remember, that's going to be, that is what is going to make your collage quilt really, really interesting and look very sophisticated and beautiful, just pulling in as much fabric as you can. So that's why it's super important to be able to stay pretty organized. So you can see once I'm done, I don't really do anything other than just throw these pieces in. And this bin is big enough that they can just lay flat. I don't have to fold them. And if anything is large enough to fold, it goes into one of my nice tidy bins. And that's how I stay organized. So I, well, while I'm working, now let's just quickly, it looks like I need a few more light pieces of blue to make sure that I've got that light value represented. And I just love to dig in my fabric and pull out whatever I think I might wanna use when I am working on a project like this. Okay, so it's kind of all spread out right now. So now I'm going to start kind of pulling them together because I really only need four groups of fabric. So my ultra darks are gonna go here. Um, my, the next darks, and maybe I'll put those there. Okay, 
So these are going to be my lights. Um, let's see if there are any other purples that would be, ah, yes, some other purples that would be kind of interesting. Um, I like this one. So this is, this is how I do it. This is how I select fabric. So I think this is the beginning of, of a really, of four really good value sets. So you can see this one, that piece could maybe go in both. Let's just stick it right there. And this one might go here too. So if you take a look at this, this will show exactly, these are all really dark. Now I could pull in some green too. Doesn't that green look really pretty in there? I okay, I think that's kind of mid between those. And I'm gonna put that one away. And do I wanna use that one? Yeah, I think I do. So if I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna combine these and just turn into three value sets. So I'm gonna put these over here and now I've got a good start on my dark value set, my mid-tone value set, and my light value set. And the thing of it is, remember again, I'm gonna tell you the last time, the more fabric that you can pull in to each of these value sets, the better your collage is going to look. So, that's my tip for today. I hope that this is really helpful about how I kind of organize my fabric and how I approach the beginning of a project. I go to my scraps and I separate them and I pull out anything I might need and then I sort them into uh, piles according to how many values I need to represent on my project. Okay, I'll be doing lots more videos to make sure that you have success with your collage quilts. And in the meantime, uh, you can find all of my resources at collagequilter.com. That's where you'll find my books and my patterns and any supplies that you might need for making a collage quilt. Okay, have a lovely day and I hope to see you soon. Bye.